All right. Uh, so, Ram, uh, I know that uh, for a, uh, a pretty long time, uh, Microsoft did not recommend Office or did not, did not recommend Express Route for Office 365. In fact, uh, initially, if you're doing peering, there were three separate peerings. Uh, there was private peering, which would connect you to uh, virtual networks. There was public peering, which would connect you to uh, Azure platform services and, and you know, route those connections through Express Route to things like storage and uh, Azure SQL database. Uh, and then there was Microsoft, uh, which would route you to their cloud offerings, primarily Microsoft 365 and Dynamics 365. And uh, at the time, Microsoft recommended generally against using the Microsoft peering. However, uh, I think they got enough pushback from their customers that uh, I want to say two years ago, uh, they actually blended the or combined the public uh, peering and the Microsoft peering and just called it Microsoft peering. So now uh, Microsoft actually kind of flipped on that. And uh, their general recommendation is uh, that it's, it's fine. And there is some complexity in terms of uh, what you need to do for you know, your own network setup. Uh, I actually added a, uh, another, I just popped in a reference into the chat uh, that actually goes through uh, their uh, process, the recommended process. And it's, it's, there's nothing, and I just wanted to double check. Uh, there's nothing in here that, uh, is, uh, you know, trying to discourage you from using it. And like I said, you know, if they don't want you using that, then they would also not want you, uh, routing traffic to their platform services, which they absolutely do. So uh, I'm not sure if you're seeing current documentation that's discouraging that, um, but uh, if you know if you've looked at old or just haven't really looked at it too hard, or maybe I've talked to somebody who hasn't really looked at it too hard in the last year or so, um, that might be why you're getting that impression. All right, let's see. We had to submit a request for authorization before we could import the BGP routes through the Express route. Our Request was declined by Microsoft, so they do not allow just anyone to use the Express Route for Office 365. Huh? Did I'm hoping you escalated that? And I tell you what, I will do, Ram. Uh, we have a number of Office 365 experts uh, that we currently have working on content to build out. Uh, our, uh, but, but that's fair. Uh, I will tell you, I'm not going to have a, uh, I'm not positive. I'll get a, a better response as to why that may be. Uh, but, uh, I do have, as I said, right now, a number, uh, of, uh, Microsoft 365 experts working on content and I will send it out to them, uh, and see if they can give you a better reason as to why that would be. I will tell you why they used to not do it. Their, their point before was that those services are optimized uh, for public access, right? Which, I mean, okay. Uh, but that, that was the old reason. Uh, as far as, you know, not giving up the uh, BGP info, that's, that's a little strange to me. If it's going to be a service they offer and they don't, I'm going to actually look that up to see if they document anywhere why they would do that. But I will also put that to our, uh, our several other experts we have working, as I said, on Microsoft 365. So great question. Um, the answer to that is, is twofold um, and it can be summed, summed up thusly, uh, data science and politics. So Microsoft is, you know, one thing they want to do is they want to have data centers uh, it, pretty much in every region, every geopolitical region, so that 
um, frankly, you know, they get more business and they can say, hey, we've got this global coverage that's better than anybody else. Um, and they, so, I mean, that's, that's part of it. The other part, when I say data science, I mean, they're looking at usage patterns and uh, they are building out in the regions where they have the most demand. Now, what was interesting with uh, the COVID, um, and, and I think in the end for cloud customers, this is going to be a very good thing. You know, that, that was an unprecedented spike. And um, there was definitely some, oh, oh, man, I'm sorry. I just, let me read that question. I forgot I was doing that great at first. Here's the question. Uh, how does MS choose? And I, I also forgot, I forgot to do all sorts of things. So uh, thank you, uh, Mark, for pointing that out. All right, let me start again. The question is, how does Microsoft choose regions for its data center? Do you think that it, due to the crisis like COVID, will cloud provider expand to new zones? On Twitter, on Twitter, I've read that it might hit the upper limit in Europe. Okay. Um, and again, now my answer to that question probably makes more sense. That was that was rookie rookie trainer mistake one hundred and one there. Um, so again, political and uh, demand driven, really. Right? They want to expand. They want to be everywhere they can be. In some cases, due to data sovereignty, they've even opened up. Uh, separate clouds. Uh, obviously, uh, China has uh, a sovereign cloud. Germany has a sovereign cloud, and there's two different sovereign clouds in the U.S. Um, and then, you know, beyond that, uh, you know, they want to make sure they have multiple data centers. First of all, within any region, uh, the the goal is to have at least three data centers, and I think in most regions, certainly in Europe and the U.S., they do. Um, and then beyond that, it's it's absolutely demand driven. They are building out, uh, you know, AWS and Azure are the two biggest consumers of, uh, well, if you will, server parts uh, in the world. Um, and um, so they're continuously building. They're looking at demand. Uh, what was interesting was that I think they hiccuped a little bit worse than AWS Azure did uh, with COVID. Uh, and apparently a lot of that had to do with the uh, increase in Teams and that Teams was sort of taking over uh, a lot of the Azure data centers. Um, and they have committed uh, to providing uh, sufficient uh, bandwidth, sufficient ca capacity, uh, so as that is not going to happen in the future. Um, so I think, you know, what you're going to see, it would be frankly, very bad for Microsoft, um, to sit at an upper limit, uh, for any time, uh, and, and they should be building out ahead of that. Again, I think a lot of what happened, uh, at the, at the beginning of COVID-19, uh, was a spike that was just unprecedented and, and frankly, hadn't been, uh, planned for. Uh, I will tell you some interesting things uh, in accordance with that. Uh, I, I know that uh, certain types of uh, free subscriptions uh, were completely not quite disabled, but effectively disabled. So they kicked off all the free subscriptions so that they'd have capacity for everything else. Um, and I know uh, from from what I saw and from what I heard through some of my channels, particularly in Europe, uh, a lot of it had to do with timing, not so much the actual physical capacity within uh, the data centers, although that was, you know, going up towards, uh, towards peak, uh, but a lot of it just had to do with bandwidth usage. And so, uh, you know, one of the... Uh, one of the recommendations that, that I saw come across and, you know, kind of across some of the trainer messaging was, uh, you know, if you're going to uh, deploy things, deploy them and at and basically at off hours because uh, you'll have much better luck deploying them. Yeah, I, I think hopefully that was the only one. I was just, just got into too much of a rhythm on answering questions. Again, I apologize for not having read that one out. And if I had not read any others as well. Hey folks, we've got about three minutes left. 
So if you have any questions, good time to answer them. I, uh, I will commit to making sure I read the question out loud before I answer it. Uh, Dimitri, Dimitri, here we go. Uh, great question. Do you think that AWS will come with an alternative to Office 365 education or G Suite Classroom? Because starting using one of these in school will keep people from switching later uh, to something else. And honestly, the answer is I doubt it. I there's certainly there is nothing stopping them from doing it. Uh, in that you know uh, Google uh, really you know created G Suite from scratch well after. Uh, office has, was deeply entrenched and is deeply entrenched. Um, the thing is that AWS has absolutely nothing in that space, right? I mean, I could see that maybe partnering with uh, one of the open source uh, vendors for that, but it's, it, that's going to be a market that I think at this point, it's almost uh, like when they, they like Microsoft after, after Microsoft completely uh, lost the mobile market, you know, and it really became Google and Apple. Uh, there really was no hope for them. And same thing with AWS, right? AWS tried to crack the, um, the mobile market, but it just, there just wasn't a way for them to do that. And I suspect this pure speculation on my part, but I suspect that will be the case, uh, with, uh, if, if, you know, AWS, if, if they made any attempt, uh, to crack that, um, or, or more likely not even trying. All right. It is four o'clock and, uh, it's been fantastic. So many of you have stayed on the whole time. Uh, just, uh, unless questions come up while I'm closing this out, uh, I want to, uh, you know, first of all, seriously, thank you for being here uh, and thank you for all the questions. Uh, there's one or two that uh, I did defer on. Those will be answered. Like I said, I want to get back and get you a really good answer on those. Uh, other than that, you can always ask me questions. Uh, absolutely feel free to. You can, um, you know, I, I have my contact information uh, there on the screen right now. Uh, and I know that Brittany put it into the chat as well. Um, so I'm always more than happy uh, to get back to you. Uh, reach out to me on uh, Twitter. You can reach out to me. You can find me pretty easily on LinkedIn as well. Uh, and uh, I will be happy to, uh, to make every effort to give you the best possible answer to any questions you have. And I hope uh, that if you haven't already uh, started taking a look at our uh, Cloud Pass offering and our, our training that we've got available. Uh, would love for you to uh, check that out. Just you know, go to ine.com, find the cloud pretty easily, and you'll get information on that. Uh, get a subscription. They're they're fairly cheap, fairly fairly cost effective. Cheap's a terrible word, uh, and we'd love to have you over there. So again, thank you all very much. And uh, if, as is the case for me, you have a weekend coming up, I hope you have a great weekend. And uh, I hope, uh, hope you get to do some learning. So have a good one. Uh, I'm not seeing any more questions, so I'm going to go ahead and shut this down. And uh, again, look forward. Oh, we've got one. Oh, well, you're quite welcome, Stephen. Thank you for the great questions. Uh, I think I've, I've got some that are, are still coming to you. So uh, hang on for that. All right. Outstanding. You all have a great one. And um, talk to you soon.